you, Miss Meyer. Good evening, parents, teachers, and of course, class of 2020. A few weeks ago, I heard a story about a man named John who decided to take his dog, Nova, on a walk. Shortly after they departed, Nova's eye caught sight of a rabbit up ahead, and she pulled away from John to taste it. After hours of searching for her, he decided to give up and go home. On his way back, he thought to himself how unlucky he was to have lost Nova. A few days later, he heard a knock at the door, only to find that it was a beautiful woman named Jennifer, who had found Nova hiding in a patch of bushes outside her house. He and Jennifer began dating, and he thought to himself how lucky he was that she was the one to have found Nova. A few weeks later, he was on his way to pick her up from a date, when out of nowhere he was hit by another car. On his way to the hospital, he thought to himself, how unlucky am I? If only I had left a few minutes earlier, I would have entirely avoided this catastrophe. Why did this happen to me? After surgery, the doctor informed him that he had a severe heart condition that would have resulted in a heart attack, but because it was found early, it could be treated. John thought to himself how lucky he was to have been in that place at that exact time, how lucky he was that Jennifer was the one that had found Nova, and how lucky he was that she had been lost in the first place. Sitting in the hospital, he struggled to understand how something so good could be so bad and how he truly has no knowledge of what may lie on the other side of any given situation. This has been dubbed the Nova Effect and has been used to demonstrate that we never truly know why things happen the way they do, but we can control the way we react to them. It is no secret that we are living in unprecedented times. I mean, I'm giving you the speech from my computer, but if my time at the International Academy has taught me anything, it's the power of perspective. Although the pandemic has undoubtedly caused so much sadness, I have learned that there are a million ways to view one situation, whether that means getting to say you are part of the IAM's first virtual graduation, or that you were able to spend the last two months with your family. This same uncertainty applied when we decided to attend the International Academy in Macomb four years ago, not knowing if we had made the right choice. I recall several late nights my freshman year that had made me think that I had made the wrong choice and that it wasn't worth it. But standing here as a senior, I can tell you with certainty that it was. The way I have been taught to expand my way of thinking to try and understand one situation in so many different ways is something that has set me up for the rest of my life. At my freshman orientation, I recall Mr. Tab telling us that the students that attend this school are not any smarter or better than any other kids, but what truly makes them unique is their love of learning. And I thought to myself, well, of course all these kids are gonna be very studious, but I came to learn that it was so much deeper than this. I have had the pleasure of spending the last four years with some of the most passionate, driven, and unique individuals I think I'll ever meet. What truly made the International Academy's Class of 2020 so unique was the range of and extent of interest that my peers have. There are those who like technology, like Jacob Williams, the youngest employee at a Fortune 500 company where he works as an IT technician. There are those who like math, like Khalil Black, who began taking calculus at the age of 14 and even took the IB exams in his sophomore year. There are those who like sports, like Kayla Sterling, who was selected to travel to India this past winter in order to teach karate and self-defense, as well as Courtney Nickel, who has run Traversity Track for her home school since freshman year. There are those who like to fly, like Joel Varghese, who is a cadet and second lieutenant in the Civic Air Patrol at Selfridge Air Base, where he flies Cessna 172s and does volunteer work. But there are also those who love the arts. Take, for example, Gabby Bogtas, who wrote and recorded her first album by the time she was 16. Or Dustin Scherter, who loves producing music and has had the opportunity to work with very accomplished local rappers and producers. And there were also those who loved music, like Gretchen Eichelberg, who is proficient in 10 instruments, seven of which she taught herself. Each of these people have certainly learned the power of perspective, as Gabby has taken this time to work on her sophomore album, and Joel has continued to meet with the rest of the Civic Air Patrol via Zoom. 
Seeing the passion my peers have for what they love doing has inspired me to look inward at what is important to me and what I am passionate about. Like the Nova effect, right now our futures are more uncertain than ever, but I am confident that we have been given the tools to be innovators and to adapt to any situation we're thrown into. We bonded with new people through late nights spent working on group projects. We learned problem solving when that one person didn't do their part on them. And finally, we learned to be risk takers after having to give the presentation we were nervous for all week. I learned the value of community through being able to text anyone at 2 a.m. and know I would get a response because we all stayed up. And I learned what it meant to be passionate through seeing how each and every one of you take your diverse interests to the next level. Every moment has led us to this point, and although we may not know what the future holds, I am more than confident in saying that I know each and every one of you will be just fine. To every teacher that encouraged us to keep rising to the challenge, all of our superintendents, the administration from the ISD, parents, graduates, Dr. Strong and Ms. Anthor, thank you. There was one other thing that was said at that freshman orientation that always stuck with me. While describing the rigor of the work we would be doing, Mr. Tapps said, It won't be easy, but I have faith in all of you. At every graduation, I'm always the person that helps the graduates off the stage. And I ask every student, was it worth it? And they always tell me, of course. Mr. Tapp, although you cannot be here to do that with us today, I wanted to let you know that on behalf of the entire class of 2020, it was worth it. Thank you.